Happy St. Patrick's Day and top of the morning to you, everybody. I am Jason C. and welcome to the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room. If you're a subscriber, thanks for coming by and uh, joining me for this really cool episode on St. Patty's Day. If it's your first time here looking for the latest in bourbon and whiskey news and reviews, you have found the right place, so think about hitting that subscribe button below and hit that bell notification so you know when I'm putting out a new video. So today we have a really cool review for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, if you're familiar with Green Spot and Yellow Spot Irish whiskeys like this one here, uh, this is the brand new 15 year old Red Spot Single Pot Still Irish Whiskey. This is also triple cask mature, just like Yellow Spot, and we're gonna get into all that. And later on, we're gonna do a little bit of a head to head with Yellow Spot and see which one comes out on top. So let's get into it. So back in fall of 2018, Red Spot Single Pot Irish Whiskey appeared on the market for the first time since the mid 1960s. It joins the rest of the Spot family alongside Green Spot and Yellow Spot in the same range. Uh, a line that was first introduced by the Mitchell and Son Company at the turn of the 20th century. Now the Mitchell family were prominent Dublin wine merchants during the 1800s, but in 1887 they decided to branch out into the whiskey business and began maturing whiskey sourced from the nearby Jameson distillery in their cellars alongside with barrels of sherry and cases of claret wine. Now splotches of color paint were used to indicate their views on the aging potential of each cask. Blue spots indicated seven years, green spots 10, yellow spots were 12, and red spots were 15, which was the highest age in the range. Now even though this bottle of Red Spot came from Irish distillers who were really well known for distilling such famous brands as Jameson, uh, Powers, and also Middleton, uh, the Mitchell family were still reportedly very hands-on during this entire process, using old family recipes and records to recreate what the original Red Spot may have tasted like. So Kevin O'Gorman, the master of maturation at Middleton Distillery, wrote this in a statement. He said it has been a pleasure and a privilege to work with the Mitchell family on the reimagination of Red Spot and bring a piece of Dublin's rich whiskey history back to life. So with single pot still whiskey, Red Spot is triple distilled from a mash of malted and unmalted barley on pot stills. Red Spot 15 years matured at least 15 years in a combination of American oak ex-bourbon casks, ex-sherry butts, and X Marsala wine casks. As you can see on the top of the bottle, it has that iconic red spot that we spoke about earlier, which they used to mark the barrels to show the maturation or the potential in each barrel. All right guys, so here's a nice close up of the Red Spot 15 single pot still Irish whiskey. It's a 15 year old Irish whiskey with a triple cask maturation, X bourbon cask, X sherry butts, and Marsala wine casks. Now this is bottled at a nice ABV of 46%, which is a nice change from the normal 80 proof you'll see on a lot of Irish whiskeys. This is also non-chill filtered and is available now for a price tag of around 130 bucks. As you can see, I've taken a few sips of this one already. <laughs> it's gotten a little bit better over time. So I feel like I could give you a good indication of uh, really what this whiskey tastes like and what's gonna become if you happen to pick up a bottle. So let's uh, open it up here. Well, first let me show you the red top here. This is the that uh, little red spot that we spoke about, that's on the top of each bottle. Same thing on the yellow spot and the green spot. It's a nice little uh, cork pop there. This has a really beautiful color for an Irish whiskey. All right guys, so I've been really excited to share this whiskey with you and review it. Uh, like I said, it's been changing a little bit over time, getting better and better and different flavors kind of coming to the forefront. So really excited to get into this one. So let's start with the color because the color on this is really beautiful. So as you can see, it's got this almost really light honey color, this light amber. So you can kind of tell that it probably started off as that quintessential light golden color that we normally see in an Irish whiskey. But all that extra barrel maturation from the three different casks really imparted a beautiful color to it. It's got really nice legs from the um, non-chill filtration. Just a, just a really nice color in the whiskey. All right, so let's go to the nose and see what we get. Man, it's, it's so fruit forward. I mean, each time I go back to it, there is a, a different fruit flavor here to be found. But the one that immediately jumps out to you is this uh, figs and apples right off the bat. Mm, there is an underlying vanilla and caramel sweetness, probably some influence from the uh, ex-bourbon casks. Yeah, figs, some orange peel in there, I think, some orange zest, really nice. Yeah, that apple note, the, some dark fruits in there, mm, some raisins. Now, what I really love about the nose of this, uh, this whiskey is when you really get some air in it and you open it up, if you really kind of get your nose in there, 
take a nice deep breath. Then you're getting uh, a walnut flavor, like a nuttiness from that Marsala wine cask. I mean, it's, it's a little bit hard to find because of the bright fruit notes, but if you really give it some time and dig down deep, it's, it's there. It's, it's a really, really provides a really nice balance. Yeah, it's like walnuts or almonds. Definitely uh, a big, definitely a big influence from that Marsala cask. Yeah, Marsala wine can really impart like a nice nuttiness flavor, a nice nutty character to it. Really good. Yeah, you get a really nice barley scent there too, that kind of whole wheat toast flavor with some honey on there. But it's really underlying all those beautiful fruit flavors, the figs, the raisins, the apricots, a little bit of a strawberry in there. Like I said, each time you go back to it, there's just more stuff to be found. And then right on the back end, you get a lot of that, that walnut, that nuttiness flavor, that walnut, the almond, really beautiful nose. All right, I can't wait anymore. Let's go in for a sip. Happy St. Patty's Day, everybody. Oh, man, that is so... Oh, it changed again. Yeah, I'm telling you, this bottle, it's... Every time I go back to it, it's just a little bit different. It's it's so good. So the so let me start off with what's consistent in here. So consistently, from the time I opened it to now, it is a lot of fruit flavors, as we mentioned. And this is orange. This is strawberry. This is raisin. This is figs. Mmm. Coming through, I mean, you, you do get that barley that barley flavor to it, but it's coming through as a really beautiful kind of a whole wheat toast flavor with some, maybe some honey and some strawberry jam on there. Mmm. Really good. But then now more on the finish than I was before, I'm getting the marsala influence. I'm getting the walnuts, the almonds, maybe, maybe even a little bit of a hazelnut there. Mmm. Just a beautifully balanced Irish whiskey. Let's go in for another sip. Yeah, it's really, this whiskey really attacks your palate kind of in three parts. You get the burst of fruitiness right in the beginning. Then you get all those beautiful pot still, that spicy barley note a little bit. And then on the end, it's finishing with a little bit of a walnut almond characteristic right there on the finish. At 46% non-chill filtered, it is very mouth coating, but the finish is not that long on this. It's, it's, it's so, it's just so smooth and light and... It's so fruity up front. All right, let's go for another sip here. Cheers. Yeah, if I could describe the palate here, it, it is, it's very rich. You really feel it kind of weighing down on your, on your palate. Works its way to the front. It kind of keeps going frontwards. Um, really lights up the, the different flavor profiles here. Like I said, those fruity, those fruity notes, the fruity characteristics. But you know, the finish, yeah, the finish is still a little bit short on this. You do get a little bit of a spice kick there, but you don't really feel it going down. Uh, it just kind of ends right at the back of your throat there. It leaves a little lingering uh, pot still, barley, pepper finish there on the back end. Maybe a little bit of a cinnamon. That always comes through as a little bit of a cinnamon characteristic for me. Uh, really good whiskey. Let's have one last sip here. Cheers. Yeah, now it's, yeah, with each sip, with each sip, you're getting the same experience. It's a, it's, it's a beautiful whiskey, fruit forward, raisins, apples, strawberry jam, medium, medium to burnt toast, <laughs> a little bit of honey in there, some strawberry jam. And then you get a burst of that barley spiciness mm, and then finishes with that nutty character that you're getting from the Marsala, I think. Just a really beautiful, well-rounded 15-year-old uh, Irish whiskey. All right, guys, so as I mentioned, we're going to do a quick comparison to Yellow Spot 12, which has been one of my favorite Irish whiskeys to go to. It's a little bit on the pricey side, but um, it really gives you a really different type of flavor profile for an Irish whiskey, and I love it. And I wanted to really compare the two to kind of give you an idea of how they differentiate. So let's meet Yellow Spot 12. So Yellow Spot was re-released in the UK in May of 2010 after not being bottled since the 1950s. This is a single pot still whiskey that is distilled at Middleton Distillery uh, for the wine merchants Mitchell & Sons, as we mentioned. Now, this is not finished in X wine barrels, but rather is a combination of whiskeys that have been aged in American X bourbon, Spanish X sherry, and Spanish X Malaga wine cask, which is a sweet fortified wine, for a minimum of 12 years. This is also bottled at 46% ABV, non-chill filtered, and is available for a price tag of around $100 to $110. All right, so now I'm pouring some yellow spot. And we're going to see how the comparisons uh, go between yellow spot and red spot. 
It's always a lot of fun doing this to kind of find your favorite in the core range. All right, so first let's compare the color here. So the colors, if you look at them closely here, the 12 year is actually, I think, slightly darker. Now you probably can't see it from your view, but from my view, the 12 seems a tad bit darker than the 15, which is surprising. Uh, maybe it's that Malaga cask, which is that fortified sweet wine. That's uh, maybe giving a little bit of a darker character. So let's go into the nose and see what we get here. Well, so this on the nose is way different. This has more of a spicy barley character to it. This is more butterscotchy, more caramel here. A lot more of that bourbon influence on this nose, I think. There's some dried fruits on here. Definitely still picking up a little bit of a raisin flavor. You're still getting that really nice whole wheat toast. Some almonds in there too. A lot of vanilla. A ton of vanilla in there. You're getting a little bit of a citrus note too. Yeah, but this, this you're getting more of that barley, that spicy barley characteristic on the nose, hands down. All right, so let's go into the palate. Cheers. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Oh, wow. This starts off completely different. So the barley spiciness hits you first. It's not like this one where it's kind of the, on the, on the 15, this one, the barley spiciness doesn't come until maybe the second act. On here, it's totally the first act. Really, really good. Let's go on for a quick second sip. Yeah, that, those barley rich flavors, man, they really, they really hit you up front. You get a nice medium kind of toast, honey, apricot, citrus flavor right up front. Then as it works its way back, man, there's, there's maybe a little hint of banana in there too. I feel like that's not something I picked up there before. A little hit of banana. I'm wondering if it's because after I'm having this, some other flavors are making itself known here. But yeah, maybe a, a slight hint of banana there. Mm. Definitely a lot of citrus. Yeah, I could feel the finish on this one a little bit more. I would definitely give the finish a little bit of a uh, a little bit of an edge here on the yellow spot 12. The, uh, the red spot does not have a finish like this. Not as long, not nearly as long. So let's go for another sip here. Yeah, it's... <laughs> It's so weird. It's like a complete reversal of this whiskey. So the 12 year, you get the barley. You get you get some fruitiness there, but you get a lot of that burnt toast, honey, lemon zest flavor right up front. And then when it finishes, that's where you're getting hit with a bunch of citrus and lemon zest and maybe a little hint of banana there. And the finish just is, is definitely longer on this one too. Whereas this one in comparison, this one, all the fruit flavors are way up front. Uh, and they really hit you right away. And then it, then it gets into a slight barley flavor. And then the Marsala cast takes over with that nuttiness to it. But, I mean, two they, they are both very, very good Irish whiskeys. But they do offer very different drinking experiences. Let's go for one last sip on the yellow spot. Cheers. Yeah, and even on this one, there's more of a, there's a bit more of an oak character there, too. Definitely more oaky than this one. That oak, that spice, the wood character. Mm. Not as not as uh, not as almond or walnut forward like this one. This has a slight nuttiness to it, but I think that's more of that spicy barley characteristic with that whole wheat toast. Mm, yeah, both are both are extremely delicious whiskeys, but I think they offer two different experiences for anyone that's actually trying them. All right, guys, so if I have to pick one of the two that I'm enjoying most, um, I still think I'm going to lean towards the Yellow Spot 12, uh, just because I feel like it offers more of a balanced Irish whiskey experience. It's got that bite that I really like in an Irish whiskey. It's got a really beautiful finish to it. Got a little bit more oak. Um, it's not as sweet. There are sweet flavors in here, but I feel like that quintessential Irish whiskey, that really beautiful barley, that single pot still flavor that you love, is more to be found in this bottle. Now, not to say the Red Spot 15 is an absolutely delicious bottle too, but it's more of a kind of a dessert whiskey to me. This is super fruit forward. It's got a really easy finish. There's really not a long finish to it at all. It's very sweet, uh, but at the same time, it's very mouth coating. It seems to be changing over time as well. You can pretty much give this to any whiskey lover. They're gonna love this stuff. It's really, really good. But for me, for more of that purest type of Irish whiskey experience, I think I'm definitely going to go for the uh, for the 12th. But another amazing release from uh, from Mitchell and Sons here. They just do amazing Irish whiskeys, and you know I can't uh, say enough about them. 
All right, guys. Well, thanks again for joining me on this St. Patrick's Day at the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room for this review of Red Spot 15 with a cool cameo by Yellow Spot 12. Hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. Uh, if you haven't yet, find me on Instagram and also find me on Twitter. Let me know if you've had either of these two, what you think. And um, like I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It is the people you share it with. Have a happy St. Patrick's Day. Drink responsibly, and I'll see you next time. Take care.